Alright guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to convert a 2D image into a three-dimensional uh, object uh, using three programs. Uh, you will need a photo editing software such as Photoshop or GIMP. I'll be using Photoshop. You will need a vector image photo editing software such as Inkscape, which is free. And you will need Blender, which is free. Uh, Alright, so the first thing you need to do is import your image. I'm going to be using my personal logo. The second step is to convert it to a black and white image. Uh, in Photoshop, that is image adjustments, hue saturation, and you drop the saturation. I know that you can do this in GIMP. I just do not know the navigation path to get there, but I'm 100% sure that it, it is possible. Next, you want to hit OK. And now you want to save it to somewhere where you will be able to find it. I'm going to save mine as a PNG, as logo.png. Replace it, hit OK. Next, you want to open up Inkscape, and you just want to uh, drag in your logo right onto Inkscape, hit OK, make sure that it is centered in the canvas, not necessarily centered, but just make sure that it is entirely on this white piece of paper, I guess. Uh, next, you want to make sure that it's selected by clicking on it, an outline will come up like this. That will signify that it is selected. Click Path, Trace Bitmap, or Shift-Alt-B if you are uh, hotkey savvy hit OK, then hit Update. A uh, little image should pop up in this window that vaguely resembles your logo. Uh, that's good. Don't worry about it. Now hit File, Save As. Make sure you also save this as something and to somewhere that you will be able to recognize and navigate back to. I'll save mine as Drawing 9 to SVG. You can either save it as Inkscape SVG or Plain SVG. Either of these work. So click Save. Next you want to open up Blender. Alright, so uh, just delete the startup cube and make sure that the screen display is on. Alright, next you want to hit File, Import, Scalable Vector Graphics. You want to select whichever one that you saved it as and zoom in a lot. That is middle mouse wheel. Alright, as you can see, if we right click to select it, its origin is over here. That's not good. Hit Control Alt Shift C and select the first option from that drop down menu geometry to origin that just makes it easier to work with next press 0 on the numpad and s to scale all the way not all the way up uh, but until it fits the camera and then rz to just reorient it a bit we're going to scale mine a bit more all this is personal preference from here on out basically uh, you can mess around with whatever values you want uh, just I'm using what I find works best for this type of project. You just want to make sure that the entire image is in the screen. And next you want to hit Alt C, Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text as the second option. Uh, up here where it says Blender Render, click that, select Cycles Render. I'm going to drag this out a little bit. Uh, next hit 1 and 5 so that we go into front orthographic mu uh, view mode. We're going to click this blue arrow and while holding shift drag it up just until you can see that red line that's just so that when we add this void or not this void this uh, ground uh, it doesn't clip into this object and it looks nice so in camera mode you don't have to be in camera mode but hit shift a mesh plane then hit s20 that value works almost always for this uh, just so that it's you can see up here at the corner it doesn't go out of or we can't see the edge of the ground that's good uh, next, right click your logo again, select one, and now you can either press tab to go into edit mode or from where it says object mode you can click that and select edit mode. You just want to make sure that you're in edit mode, then press A a few times, to, just until everything's highlighted you'll be able to tell it's highlighted if it is yellow. You should only have to press it once though. Alright, now from uh, press one to ensure that you're in front mode. Press E and it should already be on the Z axis. While holding control, it'll snap to the grid. I like this. Uh, you can extrude out however far you want. I'm just going to do a point 0.1, something small. I find that value works nicely. Uh, next, we're going to delete this light. We will not be needing it. We're going to make our own. Uh, now, you want to select, uh, make sure that your logo is selected or your image. And you want to select uh, up on this panel where it has lots of icons, the material that is the fourth from last, and select use nodes. We're going to change this to be a gold color. You can change it to be whatever you want, but I like I think gold looks nice for this uh, for this image at least. So you want to select glossy BSDF. 
uh, you want to change the color. I know uh, I have a gold color that I like. It is, if you go into the hex tab and you type in FFD79B, it'll give you a nice gold color. Uh, you want to make sure uh, if you see it's not all the way uh, yellow and it's not all the way white, it's somewhere in between and it looks nice. I'm going to change the viewport color in the settings to be the gold color as well. Uh, and we're going to leave its roughness at 0 0.02 so that it doesn't, uh, basically glossy, the glossy shader will make it look like a mirror and we're going to add the lights and when we add the lights, if it's just a perfect mirror, perfect reflection with no distortion or anything, it'll look kind of tacky to have these two white rectangles. So if we give it 0 0.2 roughness, it will, um, it will uh, fuzz it out a little bit and just make the image look nicer. So speaking of lights, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to press Z so that we go into wireframe mode so that we can see a little bit more easily. Press Shift A, add a mesh plane, S, Y, uh, I'm going to scale it by 8, and S, X so that it's a bit thinner. Press 1 to go into front view, drag it up till it is, oop, make sure you select the blue arrow, or you can press G, Z. Uh, to move it up along the Z axis. But you just want to drag it up till it is about the same height as the camera. Move it over till it is about at the width of your logo. Then press R and rotate it so that it is facing your logo. Uh, next, we want to click new material. We're going to call this light underscore small. Just so that we know uh, it's, easy to, it's easy to be organized this way. Uh, we're going to select an emission type shader and we're going to give it a strength of 2. We're going to go into top mode and we're going to duplicate this and move it over a bit. Also, both of these need to be moved upwards. Uh, just trust me on that. They will... I'll, I'll show you why uh, in a second. So if you press F12 to render, you can see it looks nice and glossy. Uh, the reason why we move them upwards is right here don't worry, it's grainy right now. This is just for the sake of speed. It'll look much more crisp by the end. Uh, you can see right here the highlight sort of cuts off. That's because this is not far enough up, as well as I'm going to move them over so that the furthermost to the right light is on the left side of the logo. That way the highlights are sort of in the middle of the logo. But as you can see, we have some very dark spots up in the corners. That's not good. It's kind of ugly to the eye. Uh, just to make it easier on us, I'm going to hit S8, or I added a mesh plane and I scaled it by eight. Uh, go press one to go into front view and drag this up to about halfway in between your camera and the top of your screen. Add a new material, call this light underscore large or whatever you want. I'm going to change this to be an emission type shader as well. Give it a, we can leave it at one. Uh, now if we render, you can see everything's a bit brighter. It looks nice. I'm going to move this over and angle it a bit at our uh, our project or at our our image so that it's it's just a bit brighter there. All right, that looks good. Next, we're going to go into the render tab. That is the uh, the camera. We're going to click on the sampling and we're going to change the render to 100. Uh, this is going to take about 30 seconds. Uh, we're just going to use this image as our post-processing reference image. It is going to take a while for these to render if you're rendering off your CPU. Uh, if you have a NVIDIA graphics card, then it will go faster because they have CUDA cores and Blender is optimized to render using CUDA cores, but if you have a different kind of processor such as AMD, uh, then you will have to render using your uh, CPU. Alright, so now that's finished, you can go down here where it looks like a portrait, sort of, a painting, and select the node editor. Basic overview of the node editor, you have three tabs. You have your material tab, your renders layer tab, and your textures tab. We're going to be using the second one, the renders layer tab. Check use nodes and backdrop. Drag render layers over to the left, composite over to the right. Hold control and shift and left click on the render layer so that we have a viewer node so that we can tell what's happening. Alright, now we're going to get onto post processing. Hit Shift A and add Filter Glare. And we drag this over to the left. We're going to drop the threshold until you can see it starts to glow. So about a 0.5 works for this. And now we're going to add uh, hit Shift A and add Distort Lens Distortion. 
And this is one of my favorite nodes. It just adds a bit of photorealism. The value uh, we're going to be messing with is dispersion. Uh, I'll show you what that does. If we set it to one, you can see it, it makes it very blurry and it adds these. This looks kind of ugly unless you're going for a very uh, impressionistic effect. If we give it a value like 0 0.05, you can see it only does it very slightly to the edges and it makes it look more photorealistic. It just makes your render have a bit more uh, feeling in it. The sense of time was put into it, it just makes it look nicer. Next we're going to do some color correction, shift A, color, hue saturation, oh not hue saturation, my bad, uh, color RGB curves, that's what we want. Alright, uh, this image right here, this is your input, whatever is plugged into here is what you're going to be modifying the color of, in this case it's this image passed through a glare and lens distortion. You have four tabs up here on the top, this is contrast, red, green, and blue, you can play with these. Uh, in case you didn't get the color you wanted or you just want to add some things that you weren't able to uh, just using the materials tab you can do it here so in contrast it'll make your dark areas darker and your bright areas brighter um, something slight like that that looks good I don't want to add any red green or uh, red or green but I would like to add a bit of blue very soft touch of blue just about there so it just gives it a bit more feeling Next, you want to make sure that whatever node you did last, you want to make sure that that's connected to the composite, otherwise it won't work. <laughs> Alright, now back over here on the render tab with the camera, you want to select the slider and make, it sh make sure that's 100%. You can change the resolution of the photo if you want. I'm going to leave mine at 1920 by 1080. Go down here back to sampling, change that to 500, and now we're ready to render it. Uh, click render, this could take anywhere from 10, to, it could take five minutes it could take 15 minutes it's, it depends on what you're rendering off of alright so hit render and just wait for that to finish I'll be right back alright guys you can see the image is finished and it looks great the next step is to just save it so down here on the bottom left you want to just hit image save as image save it to wherever you want as whatever you want if you wanted to change it right now it's being saved as a PNG you could go over here and uh, select from this format this is in the render tab just select from any of these formats these ones over here are movies uh, but these are images so knock yourself out I hope you guys enjoyed the video alright bye